yourself and cry. Is this a matter of you two bands just knowing each other through the years and saying, hey, let's go out on tour? Or is this management coming to you and say, you know, similar audiences, similar eras, let's get you guys back out there? My understanding, it was the agency uh, hmm. that put this together. So the booking agency, um, you know, saw the value of this sort of like combined uh, um package i guess you would call it to make it kind of clinical <laughs> and so yeah so I, I they sort of pitched it to us and we were like great sure this sounds like a lot of fun and it's nice to play theaters and uh yeah and we're really looking forward to it Well, I want to ask you about the theaters, actually. Does it make a difference to you being up there on stage playing these soft seat theaters with people sitting as opposed to having fans jumping up and down at you, kind of, you know, like at a Lee's Pals type of place? I mean, they both have their value. It's sometimes it's fun to play in a sweaty club, and sometimes it's just nice to put on a performance in a, a venue like the ones you described, where people can just kind of sit and watch the show. And, and I mean, as a... As a slightly older gentleman myself, it's sort of I sort of see the value of you know going to a venue like you know like in Toronto where I live, going to like Massey Hall and be able to sit in a comfortable seat and watch you know one of my old favorite bands play. So I, I definitely see the value, especially for the fans, to be able to sit in a comfortable environment with you know good sound and you know maybe not a bunch of like drunk yahoos who are you know out for the one night they go out for the whole year and get a little bit too drunk kind of thing. So yeah, I I think for the fans it's great. To be able to see a band in that um, environment, and so yeah, we're 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 really happy to be doing it. You know, this is actually it brings me nicely to my to my next question, which is of course about one of your signature songs is "I'm an Adult Now." I'm an adult now. I'm an adult now. I've got the problems of an adult on my head, on my shoulders. I'm an adult now. You wrote this in 1985. You were in your mid 20s at the time. Is how is playing a song like that, you know, nearly 40 years later in 2022? Well, yeah, I, I, I've, I've often thought that, you know, some of the songs that I wrote back then um, are almost more poignant now than they were when I first wrote them, like the song like I'm an adult now or a song like She's So Young. Um, some of the songs are somewhat difficult to connect with now um and they were certain certainly the product of a younger man but but yeah I, i'm an adult now still feels very real to me and feels sort of fresh in terms of like its subject matter so uh, yeah it's it's easy for me to perform that song because like i still relate to the lyrics it's nice to see you back out there playing those soft seat theaters i love your attitude towards it uh, knowing where you are knowing where your fans are as well it's going to be a great time mo appreciate your time today for us here on halt the news I appreciate you having me. Looking forward to the shows. Whoa, whoa, I'm an adult.